This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're looking at not one, but two LG Optimus G smartphones. One here for AT&T, and this one is for Sprint. And pretty much they look alike, but there's some noticeable differences, and we'll talk about those in our video. In terms of the basic specs, they are the same. 1.5 GHz Qualcomm S4 Pro, quad-core CPU, 2 gigs of RAM, lots of internal storage, 8 megapixel camera on the AT&T one, 13 megapixel on the Sprint one, and we're going to look at them now. So here we have the LG Optimus U times 2 AT&T version here, Sprint version here, pretty much identical looking from the front, but as we take a look around you'll see there are some slight differences to the casing themselves. Both of these phones feature the first Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 quad-core 1.5 GHz CPU, that's the Qualcomm S4 Pro. Pretty exciting there. Uh, the Qualcomm S4 Dual Core really did about as well as Tegra 3 in benchmarks and was a very fast performer, so it's real exciting now to have that quad core here. And yes, there are definitely significant improvements in performance. Both phones have a 4.7 inch 1280 by 768 display instead of the usual 720 for the higher end phones, and that's why they might look a little bit wider to you, though actually compared to the Galaxy S3 and the HTC One X, also phones with very large displays and 1280 by 720p, they actually are about the same dimensions. The LG tends to look a little bit bigger and boxier because it, they always go for that, that squared off kind of look there. This is an IPS display, very sharp, very lovely, nice colors on, obviously wide viewing angles, not immune to glare, that's never going to go away as long as we have glossy screen phones, but nice display. Both phones have 2 gigs of RAM. The AT&T model has 16 gigs of internal storage and you get a 16 gig micro SD card for a total of 32 gigs out of the box. And the Sprint version has 32 gigs built in and no SD card slot. Hmm, surprised to see such a difference there between these two versions of the Optimus G for our US carriers. The Sprint version has a 13 megapixel camera that we, we know and love from the overseas version of the phone and AT&T brings that down to 8. Uh, that's a little disappointing, isn't it? It's a nice camera, but gee, 13 megapixels would just be the cheese and the crackers. Oh well, there goes that. Both phones run Android OS 4.04 ice cream sandwich, and they will get upgrades to Jelly Bean. No announcement as to when yet. Now, here's where you, you geekier folks are going to start giggling and saying, yeah, right, LG, they never get OS upgrades out there at any decent time. But that may change now that LG is apparently going to be making the next Nexus phone. They may probably be getting some inroads there into getting OS software up quickly. And since the Nexus phone looks largely based on the Optimus G with just a curvier kind of casing, I have pretty good hope for that. They both run the Opti new Optimus UI. Identical, in fact, in terms of that. Just a few little tweaks here and there, different menu items and that kind of thing. But other than that, they're the same. Both have a 1.3 megapixel front video chat camera, dual band Wi-Fi, and it's 11 BGN, Bluetooth, and they have NFC. So let's look at them in detail now. Now both these phones have LTE, by the way. Now Sprint's LTE coverage is mezza mezza right now. They really don't have a whole lot covered. In fact, we're in the Dallas area, which is supposed to have LTE, but we still can't pick it up. But anyway, they both have that. The SIM card is sealed inside as Sprint is wont to do. I don't know why they do, but they do that, so there's no access to that. And so we're looking at the phone right here. You can see kind of shiny size, a little metal rim. Sprint always likes a little flash add-on. LG had said they tried to remove all excess ornamentation and make a very simple phone, but Sprint kind of brought back some of those highlights. Metal strip here, here's your volume controls on this side. On the top, our headphone jack, there's a microphone hole. On this side, there's your power button. Pretty cool when it's plugged in and charging. There's a red LED around that that lights up. Looks nice. And nothing here, no doors, just shiny plastic. Shiny plastic on the bottom. Two screws that hold the casing together because this is one of those sealed together kind of phones that you don't have access to the battery. And there's your micro USB port, microphone hole. And as we take a look at back of the phone, it's already getting fingerprinty. It's already very shiny anyway, though, as you can see. There is a nice little pattern on the back. Kind of gives it a little bit of visual interest. Not the easiest thing to see because it is so reflective. The bad thing is it is going to get mucky with fingerprints instantly. Cleans up pretty easily, but doesn't stay pretty long. There's your speaker hole right here. For the, and I discovered that when you hold it, you tend to put your hand right around the bottom of the phone, right? So it's easy to block that speaker. And you'll hear it become muffled, and you'll say, aha, uh -huh, and you'll take your hand away. 13 megapixel camera labeled as such, and there's your LED flash. So no card slots, no access to the battery there. 
And as we take a look at the AT&T one, we can see we've got the, the metal trim over here, but it's very subtle, like a black, black effect. And we've got a door right here, because, aha, pry that open. There's access to the micro SD card slot, again, comes with a 16 gig card, and there's the micro SIM card slot. So nice to have expandable storage there. Just like the Sprint version, the volume control is right up there. And the top and the bottom of the phone, AT&T likes a little textured plastic here and there, and then that actually makes it a little bit less slippery. That's good. So we've got textured black plastic up here. Here's your headphone jack. There's your microphone hole. Same deal with the power. Lighter, lighter ring around it when it's plugged in. Nothing else on the side. Bottom are little screws that hold the casing together. There's the micro USB. There's the microphone hole. And on the back, the same kind of shiny back finish that gets mucky pretty quick. I'd say the pattern on this is a little bit more distinct. And we have a little AT&T logo here. There's our speaker hole, e equally easy to block. 8 megapixel camera, LED flash. Battery is sealed inside this. There is no way to pry this back off unless you want to unscrew it and take it apart. On the front we have capacitive buttons right here and you can control the lighting duration. You can see it just went out on the AT&T version because I have that set for a six second timeout. Whereas on the Sprint version I've set it to never timeout. As long as the display is on these will be lit up. Now with both phones you can do whatever you want. You can set a short duration, long duration, or have it always be on. That's up to you. So both phones are running the Optimus UI with the same options and that means you get the little squared off icons over here. We have the quick launcher strip center to get to all of your applications, much like a standard ice cream sandwich on this. Multiple home screens. And you see that visual effect? You can choose from several. It's kind of nice. Since this has a quad-core CPU and Adreno 320 graphics, LG was basically looking for things to keep the phone busy, to make use of all the power that's inside the phone. So there's a lot of visual effect options that are here. Now, you can turn some of those off if you don't like them, but by default, most of them are turned on. Up here you can see we have our little N to indicate NFC. LG likes to have that. Usually you won't find that on phones. And if we swipe down we have our notifications and we have quick access to our wireless radios here, airplane mode, and to the quick memo application that we've seen on other Optimus phones. And basically you can take a screenshot of anything, draw all over it, and then save it as a screenshot. So you can see we have various pencil tools, sharing tools, saving. So say I want to just make a big old arrow here and write something, you know, you get the idea. And then I hit save or I hit share if I want to share it. I can share it through all these methods right here. So that's kind of a handy thing to do. And shows a little bit of the pen heritage, even though this one is just a capacitive screen, just works with your finger. No, no active stylus here. As usual, we get the LG weather widget. Not the prettiest that I've seen, but it gets the job done here. It gives us our forecast. Functional, useful, that kind of thing. You can choose from many nice home screen patterns it comes with. And if you want to take a look at the app drawer, here it is. Again, a little bit of a customized icons here and segregate between apps, downloads, and widgets, which is fine with me. I, I tend to download apps and it's nice to be able to skip the built-in apps. And the widgets are pretty much your standard Android widgets right here. We've got a couple of AT&T ones for some of the AT&T apps and the rest are Google standard apps for the most part. Music player, favorite contacts, news. You get the idea. Now in terms of AT&T apps, of course you know they're going to load their usual bevy of apps on here. We have AT&T Family Maps, AT&T Code Scanner, AT&T Locker, AT&T Navigator, AT&T Ready to Go, AT&T Smart Wi-Fi to help you find hotspots, and there's also AT&T Account Manager on here. And the home screen actually has a little folder of all the little AT&T apps put together, which you can happily ignore or use as you see fit. Standard Google Android apps are on board. You get the YouTube Player, Gmail, Google+, Maps, Navigation. And we've got Polaris Office on here as well, which is nice. We also have AT&T Live TV for those of you who like the Moby TV-based streaming TV show service. And Polaris Office here is the full version. Both of these have that. Right now we're looking at the Word-compatible segment of that application. Fairly nice and pretty sophisticated formatting going on here. So you can view, edit, and create MS Office documents using this suite. And again, both the Sprint AT&T versions have that.
And now we've switched over to the Sprint version, so you can see what we've got there. We have Visual Voicemail, that's a 30-day trial that we've got going there. Sprint ID is how you're going to bring down a whole lot more applications. If you're a Sprint customer, you're familiar with Sprint ID and their application packs. Right now we're just running the, the plain unskinned version here without any ID packs, so we don't have too many of the Sprint applications on board. Pretty much by default, all we get is Sprint ID and the Print Zone pack from Sprint themselves until we decide to download some more stuff using Sprint ID. So a pretty clean experience to start with. And we've got the same standard LG apps here. We've got the Video Wiz, Video Editor, their customized dialers on board, the Notebook, which is a handy little application available on both of these. So you can create a new note, choose whatever color you want. And we've got all sorts of tools here. So you can take notes to self, uh, record voice memos. It's a pretty rich note kind of thing. A little bit like Evernote. We've got LG Tags here that's available on both phones and that works with NFC. A lot of the phone manufacturers are doing that. You can put little tags in various places like one on your nightstand that tells it to just go into quiet mode for the evening. That sort of thing. And both the standard web browser and Chrome web browser are preloaded on both of these devices. So how fast is this 1.5 GHz quad-core CPU? Well, it did extremely well on Quadrant, scored a 72.35. That is the highest I've ever seen on a stock, unmodified, not overclocked device by far. So far, the Tegra 3 and the, the dual-core S4 CPU have been scoring around 5,000, so big jump there. On Tutu is 11,087. That's quite good. And that's about twice as fast as we've, as we've seen on other smartphones, whether it's running a Tegra 3 or it's running the S4. 4 CPU dual core, so not bad there, up there with some of the very fastest tablets we've tested. GL Benchmark 2.5 for the Egypt 2.1 Classic screen, 59 frames per second and 49 for off screen. The off screen is a particular jump, usually we see something closer to 30 for the off screen, so that's good. Sun Spider, really, really good result. 1289, that's a test where lower numbers are better and most Android smartphones score somewhere between 17 and 1800, so 1289 is a great improvement. The only thing that's still faster is the iPhone 5, which scores in the 900s. For the browser mark test, it scored 94,921 with the stock browser, which actually was a little bit faster than testing with Chrome, go figure. So that's a little bit faster than we got with our Samsung Galaxy S3. Not as fast again as the iPhone 5. Right now the iPhone 5 is winning on those synthetic benchmarks. But among Android phones, this guy is the fastest right now. Those of you who have an extreme need for speed, you just want to have the fastest possible phone, well, you're looking at it right now. Qualcomm S4 Quad-Core is just wickedly fast. And now for a size comparison, here we have Giant Phone Central. We have the HTC One X 4.7 inch display. We have the LG in the middle 4.7 inch display and the Samsung Galaxy S3 4.8 inch display. As you can see, pretty much they are just about the same size. Galaxy S3 is a little bit taller. LG, a little bit square looking, really about the same size. We put, say, the One X right on top of it, you'll see. We're talking pretty much the same size phone, but the One X and the Galaxy S3 managed to look smaller because they have those curvy designs, which actually feel a little bit better in the hand. I can't say that the LG feels so great in the hand. The One X has a polycarbonate curvy look to it, and in comparison, the LG just as thin and a similar weight, but it's just those square edges that are a little bit less ergonomic looking. Now, the advantage that the LG has, of course, is that higher resolution display just by a little bit, but the fact that it's IPS, boy, I like it a lot better than my Galaxy S3 screen. Uh, the One X, it's, it's a much closer call because that's a really stupendous screen on there. But let's take a look at an ebook reader app so you can see how text looks because I, I think that's just a wonderful use for high-resolution, large-screen device. So now we've got an EPUB book open in Aldeco. Of course, the speed's just fine on Aldeco by default doesn't do any fancy effects, but look how sharp that font is. It's just really beautiful looking. And of course, you can change font sizes, but even this fairly small size font, very sharp, very nice, very easy on the eyes, and a fairly neutral color background. That is, there's not too much of any color tint on it. So here we are on the web browser, and you can see the little icon bar for Facebook and Twitter sharing, things like that, and that's called the AT&T navigation bar. You can get rid of that. It's going to automatically auto-hide in landscape view anyway, but if you don't like that, you can get rid of it, or if you find it handy, well, more power to you. That's great. 
And you can see this, the default keyboard we get here, it's a swipe style keyboard. This is LG Zone. I like that it's long hold and press to get to your numbers and your symbols. Very easy to use, fairly precise. I'm enjoying it quite a lot. I find I don't make too many mistakes when typing. And we're doing this over AT&T's 4G LTE network right now. Certainly good speeds, and we're going to go to landscape mode, probably how most of us would use the web browser. Nice colors, really sharp, very easy to read the text, even zoomed out like that on the full desktop site. Zooming speeds, excellent. Definitely a lovely, fast phone. And let's test out video playback. We're going to play a YouTube video using the HTML5 playback feature built into the browser. Since Adobe Flash is no longer available on the Google Play Store, we don't demo it, but for those of you who are diehards, you can go to Adobe's website, download it there, and then enable loading of non-market apps and install it yourself if you want. Again, nice smooth scrolling, and here's our video. Still doing this over AT&T 4G. And there we go, playing just fine, looking sharp. That's the speaker, not super duper loud. We're a little bit over halfway mark right now. Let's see where we are. Not too loud, but not harsh, very clear, good sounding speaker on the phone. And how about video playback? This has DLNA, by the way, and not just your average DLNA. This can actually stream a video to your DLNA equipped TV receiver, whatever it is that you happen to have, while you're doing something else different on the phone. Most Android devices do mirroring. Whatever you have on the screen is what's going to be shown on the TV screen over DLNA. In this case, you can do two different things. You can stream the movie on the TV and you can be checking your email and doing whatever it is you want on your phone, which is pretty cool. Again, good use for all that CPU power. Now we'll check out 1080p local playback. With a high profile MPEG 4 trailer. We're talking about huge potential for millions of people. Looking very sharp, a little bit of letterboxing. This is actually 15 by 9 instead of 16 by 9 aspect ratio, isn't that interesting? Smooth playing, gorgeous looking, 4.7 inches, high resolution, IPS, definitely a nice screen for those of you who want to watch videos on the go. So, and here's an interesting feature that is a, an Optimus thing, it's called QSlide. You know we have Q Memo, which is a little drop down memo that I showed you. QSlide is, they're trying to one up Samsung. Now in some ways they've copied some of the Samsung features here. There's a little wise eye thing, that means that it can use the front camera to look at you. If you're staring at the screen, it won't turn the screen off, for example. There's the flip it over to mute it or pause video, those kind of features. But instead of just having the picture-in-a-picture -picture effect like the Galaxy S3, they did something even fancier. And again, this new CPU and GPU combo makes it easier. So we're playing our video, and we tap this button here. And here it is running over the home screen or whatever we want. This is the video, and this is a slider, so you can show it. Choose your translucency, so maybe you need to see what's going on. So it's a pretty freaky effect, isn't it? There, I've made it fairly translucent. I can say I want to look at the web page for a minute. I was on, and then I bring the video back. So a feature for you extreme, extreme multitaskers, uh, something geeky to show off to your friends. It depends on what you think of that feature. And here we have the LG dialer with the usual shortcuts, the call logs, favorites, and all of your contacts. And like everything else about LG, it is square. It's a little bit Mondrianish, isn't it? You got colorful squares there. Pretty easy to use, obviously large buttons, no problems. Voice quality has been good with the phone, not the absolute best we've ever seen. I'd say the Samsung Galaxy S3 and the One X still have ultimate clarity when it comes to voice, at least on AT&T's network, but still very good voice quality, very easy to understand, adequate volume, so no complaints there. In terms of data speeds on AT&T, we've been averaging about 26 megabit per second down and about 15 up, which is par for the course for AT&T LTE in our area. Uh, sadly, with Sprint, as I said, we should be in an LTE air coverage area, but we have been yet to able to find it. So we're swinging on there at 3G EVD or Rev A, 
network and there you're talking well in the Dallas Metroplex we're happy when we see 500k so kind of slow experience there thank goodness for Wi-Fi now in terms of customization of what Android looks like itself we're gonna hit the menu button over here and we're gonna choose all settings and this is the AT&T version here and then we're gonna do the same thing on the Sprint version we can keep it standing up and that says system settings now you can see we have a tabbed interface on the AT&T one. You got networks for all your network settings, sound, display, general. It's bolded out for you whereas it's just a long list strip here. Otherwise it's the same UI, same set of features. And there are a lot of features here. LG is into their software. So if we take a look at display settings for example over here you can choose your font. Lots of different fonts to choose from. Uh, several of them are kind of handwritten style. They're cute at first. They, they get a little old after a while because they're a little bit harder to read. but that's neat. You can choose your font size. Right now we are at normal, which seems pretty normal. Aspect ratio correction. This is interesting for any anything that's running in scale mode or 16 by 9. It can try to scale, improve the scale for you so things look better on the screen. Here's your front key light control so you can control how long this stays on. Right now it's always on. You can choose from these options as well. Notification LED. You can choose what it's going to flash for. It's kind of nice to have those choices. Motion sensor calibration is here. We actually have some interesting stuff for CPU too here. Quad core control. If you want to save power, basically you can drop this guy down to using fewer cores to save you some power if you're on the go. Now both of these phones have 2100 milliamp lithium ion batteries that are sealed inside. That's the same capacity as you get in the Galaxy S3. It's a perfectly reasonable capacity to have in a big screen powerful smartphone so we're not too worried about battery life and we're still putting these guys through the, the guys through the paces but I would say that each of them with moderate use should last through the day if you're a super heavy user you're GPSing all the time you're streaming a lot of video you might have trouble making it through the day and the same is true of most of today's super phones honestly we have gesture control here for example you can silence calls just by flipping the phone over and there's also basically a do not disturb feature you can set time of day when you don't want the device to make any noise except for alarms don't worry your alarms are still going to sound so you can use it as your alarm clock even if you've got it in quiet mode for the overnight so lots of little software tweaks that are available to you there and now we're going to take a look at the camera interface camera interface is same on the sprint and the AT&T versions we are using the sprint version though with a 13 megapixel camera Definite bragging rights there. Very nice sharp camera. Right now we're in video mode and you can see we can choose all the way up to full 1080p recording. You've got a variety of strange settings here that LG likes. Weird effects. Disco lighting effects. All that kind of thing. Turn the LED light on or off on the back. More settings over here. You get the idea. We'll just do a stick with that. Recording it's instantaneous and we can shoot pictures it's not making any sounds so that we don't have to hear a little tss, tss, shutter sound in the middle of our video but it takes them very quickly and very effectively and if we want to switch to camera mode we have the say cheese function here another bit of LG software you can choose some magic word that will get it to actually snap the shot for you like when everybody says cheese or as they suggest here kimchi or smile or LG. So we'll go with cheese. <laughs> and we'll try that out. Cheese. Hands free photography at its best, folks. And then we've got the time catch shot feature here, which actually shoots a, shoots a series of shots so that you don't miss the action. Interesting concept there. And then the usual brightness, focus style, you can choose between auto and face tracking, your image size, all the way up to 13 megapixels, scene mode, ISO, you get the idea. How are the pictures? Very nice. Takes very sharp, very high resolution photos. Now, megapixels aren't everything, but both these cameras actually capture a lot of detail, good sharpness, not unnaturally sharp though, good color saturation. I would certainly give the edge to the 13 megapixel camera that's on the Sprint version. I only wish AT&T had offered that as well. But either way, you're getting a really nice camera for your money. Right now we're in Batman The Dark Knight Rises, a 1.8 gig game. We are talking big game here. And you can see that it, it plays just fine. Controls are good on it. It's handling the resources. This is a very demanding game that doesn't always play well on a lot of devices. Working just fine. And now we're going to check out another game. 
All right, now we're in our beloved Dead Trigger, another demanding 3D game. Going through the old tutorial section right here before we shoot some zombies. And in this hallway, as you've seen us play this game before on other devices, if you've got a Tegra 3 tablet, you're going to get water over here in this hallway, but you don't get that here because this is not a Tegra device. So that's one issue if you go with Qualcomm, you don't get those little Tegra game optimizations. But you can still shoot your zombies just as well. Plays very smoothly, very nice. If you're playing a demanding game like this, by the way, this side of the phone, the top half does get a wee bit warm, you'll feel it. Especially when you accidentally shoot the elevator. So that's the LG Optimus G. Again, we have one for Sprint, we have one for AT&T. The AT&T one is going to be $199 with contract, available on November 2nd. Still no word on the Sprint one, but it probably won't take much longer. Either way, certainly a nice phone, one of the nicer Android super phones on the market. Very, very fast. Beautiful IPS displays, high resolution, and good cameras on both of them. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to visit our website to read the full review of these phones and subscribe to our YouTube channel.